I've got to be honest, this is a game I've never enjoyed over the last couple of years because Brighton have always come here and done very, very well. I love the way, even at 2-0, when Saliba was celebrating oh. that tackle. I love all that lot because I do think clean sheets are very, very important. Forwards win your games and defence wins your titles. I remember Steve Bold said, you don't concede a goal, you ain't going to lose the game. No, <laughs> and it's absolute facts. Yes, people, welcome back to the channel. It's myself and Lee Judges here at the Emirates. We are at the North Bank Terrace. The Tony Adams statue is literally just in front of us. It's a sunny day, but we found some shade. But Judges, you're missing it already. Yeah, I miss it. I can't believe you two wanted to do this in the shade. But there you go, like, you know, so... I can't believe Sam, like, you know, like, like white as a ghost, isn't he? Like, you know what I mean? Oh, no, I'm, I can't really talk. I go a bit, a bit red and white as well. But uh, listen, we're not here to talk about Suntan. We are here to talk about Arsenal and Brighton, the preview. Um, look, I've got to be honest, this is a game I've never enjoyed over the last couple of years because Brighton have always come here and done very, very well. Um, until last season, we did manage to obviously beat them, but they did beat us in the League Cup. Um, and the last couple of years, Lee, they've ruined our Champions League hope and our title hope. What I will say, however, I do believe that this Arsenal side has got what it takes to get past them. What's your thoughts going into this one? Yeah, I think like, it's a great point that they have been better than us over the last few years, if you look back, but we're a different animal now, much different side. Um, I do expect us to get the win, but I don't think it's going to be an easy easy win. I still don't think we're quite at our, our peak at the moment. We've still got players still trying to get their fitness. But I think that, you know, listen, Brighton, if you take them... Lightly, you mm. will you you'll get done. I I actually felt against Man United. I know that they won the game in the end, but I did think that it was a stage perhaps towards the middle half of the of the game. I thought Man United were the only winners. I think Man United were taking over when a couple of their players tired, but they got the job done. Mm. You know they've got players in their team that can hurt you, and that's the great thing about the Premier League, isn't it? Like you know, what I mean, like you've got teams like. Bright and you can go all the way down. There are players that can hurt you, and, and certainly like uh, Brighton have got that. And listen, two wins out of two, and, I, and they also won well in the in the uh, Caribou Cup as well. So they're in a really really good, uh, rich vein of form. A good time to take them on, I don't know, but like you know, I think one of the good things about it is you know that they're up there. They're, they've won their two games, so you can't take them lightly. Mm. Listen, you mentioned Man United and rightly so, they were able to get in behind them. So obviously Arsenal were going to be able to do that. But I will say Brighton's firepower up top, mate. They've got Minter who looks very good. They've got Mitoma we know all about. Evan Ferguson's injured still to come back. Jao Pedro, Danny Welbeck. They've got all firepower. But looking at us against Aston Villa, we were tough to break down and it's been two clean sheets. Do you think we can keep another one here this weekend? Yeah. Do you know what I like though? Particularly, I, I, I don't know how... I know, look, listen, I don't want to concede at Spurs and certainly don't want to concede at Man City, like, but, you know, you've kept two clean sheets. You, you know, you've got to keep clean sheets at home. More more so than... I know it's like... I think there's more emphasis on defending away from home. Probably that's why you get the clean sheets. But I, I don't want to see us as open as much this season. Like, you know, I want us... You know, like, even if some teams get a corner here, that's that's a good thing, you know. Mm. Like that's what I want this this stadium to be like, you know. Real, real difficult place to come. I felt last season that even though we was winning games and all that, I always felt there was a chance we could be got at um, because we do leave ourselves a little bit more open away from home. You, you know, like look how we won the ball back at the at, at the weekend. That's what we've got to do now. We've got to continue to do that. But um, I'm hoping that we don't concede, like you know. I, would I take a 1 0, 2 0 win? Yeah. I'd, I'd rather win. I, you might think I'm silly. I'd rather win 2 0, 1 0 than 3 1 mm. or 4 1. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, it, just, it just sets that little, that clean sheet just sets the bar a little bit better. I, I, that's how I feel. Maybe I'm wrong. And football's changed a little bit now. It's more about winning and winning well. But like, I, I, I'm still in this thing of like, you know, let's keep as many clean sheets as we possibly can. Listen, I mean, there's talk of. Arsenal improving their defence again this summer with Calafuri, Timber coming back as well, which people are saying sounds like a new or looks like a new signing. I will say that Chelsea's record of 15 goals, a lot of people I've been speaking to are saying that Arsenal should at least target that. And I don't think that's a silly thing to say. I know that it shouldn't be about how many goals you concede. It should be about winning trophies. But surely each defensive department or each department in the football team should have that as a challenge. And it weren't long ago, Lee, that we were actually going to these home games and we were conceding silly goals and we weren't always looking at our own form. You look at our home form last season, I would actually say it probably lost us the title. West Ham at home, obviously we lost to Liverpool in the FA Cup at home. We lost to Brighton in the League Cup at home. And of course, we lost to Villarreal. Yeah, and of course, like dropped points against Fulham. Um, 
you know, West Ham and um, Tottenham also, we lo yeah. uh, you know, like drop points to, lost points. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that, like, you know, and, um, you know, the, our home form has got to be, you know, like Manchester City last season, didn't lose a home game. Mm. I, I do think that is that is a, is a key thing, really, like, you know, and uh, I think it was 18 goals we conceded when we won the league in 91. I'm not 100% sure, like, it's a long while ago now. But, like, we, we was ruthless at the back mm. but we had lots of goals going lots of goals going forward with players and all that like. but that is what we've been well I've been brought up on it mm. not conceding goals proper defenders and defending well I think we've got that now I think yeah. we have got proper defenders in there I love the way even at 2-0 when Saliba was celebrating oh. that tackle I love all that lot because I do think clean sheets are very very important mm. uh, and, and listen there is a big saying in football there always is like defences win, win your leagues yeah. forwards win your matches and that is exactly what it is you know they've got to defend and defend well make sure they are really at it defensively and and with the players that we've got we don't necessarily have to be in top top form mm. we will get a chance and score so as long as we keep that clean sheet you know I always felt that you know to go to Aston Villa keep a clean sheet there that's a big statement big statement about your defence now you've got to go and do it at Spurs and, um, and Manchester City but that's later on but I do think you know what I mean I, I look at maybe look at Man City and I look at other teams that have won the league and even ourselves when we was winning the league how many like one nils, two nils were in, yeah. there, in at home yeah. Do you know what I mean? There weren't a lot of four threes, three twos, three ones and all that. Two nils, two. Do you know what I mean? That's what, that's what you've got to do. That's what winning teams do. Manchester City, like, you know, conceded a goal against Ipswich. They weren't like that. Mm. It, you know, if they have won two nil, three nil, it's more of a, you know, statement sort of a win. That's how I feel about it. So, you know, um, let's get the job done. Get here. You know, if we can get uh, a win on... Listen, I'll take a 2-1 win if it means winning the game. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, what, what we look, if we can finish nine points going into the international break, that's a good, solid start. Absolutely. Facts, man. I mean, I, I kind of uh, echo and agree with what you said about the kind of um, forwards win your games and defence wins your titles. I remember Steve Bold said, you don't concede a goal, you ain't going to lose the game. No, <laughs> and it's absolute facts. And I do think... Science, no, it? it ain't. And I think defensively, Arsenal over the last decade have been an absolute shambles at times. And I do think now we've completely solidified that. And Arteta looks like he's completed that department. And we'll move on to the midfield and, uh, and the strikers next with the team news. I mean, I look at this team that we've been put out against Wolves and against Villa. I think he's got his spot on, Mikel Arteta. Yeah. I thought Zinchenko playing against Wolves, a lot of people were kind of question marking that. But without Neto and some of their attacking players that Wolves had, I thought he was actually one of our better players, Zinchenko, in the home game. Away, we needed to drop him and he did the right thing. I thought Timber coming in was the right decision. What would you do at home here? Because they have got firepower and pace on their wings. And I would worry if we brought Zinchenko back in. So for me, it's Timber again. Yeah, so that's a great, great question. Horses for courses, isn't it? Like, you know, I, listen, I don't think Shinchenko done anything wrong in the last game, defending really, really well. But yeah, right, what you're saying, they've got some real, real top players. But if you're not going to play him at home, then when are you going to play him and all that? Like, you know, and I do think that we are a little bit better with him in that role if we're going to play that um, uh, and we're a little bit more fluent. It'll be really interesting. I, do you know what I'm going to say it now? I'm not bothered. Okay. If, he, if he plays, whoever he plays in there, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not that worried about it, like, you know. Califuri done very, very well when he come on. So, I, I, for me, whoever he plays in that position, I'm going to say, yeah, fair, fair enough with it, like, you know. So, um, and I think it's a good dilemma for him to have, like, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, uh, it'd be interesting. I think it's a real two, two positions, and it's funny, uh, uh, really up for debate, and it's all on that left-hand side. It is. I mean, Calafiori, just before we move to the left wing, um, what do you see happening with him? Because Calafiori at the moment is being bedded in. I'll tell you, it's funny. He sometimes buys players, throws them straight in, like Declan Rice, Kai Havertz of last summer, David Raya as well. We know what happened there. He's now our number one. But with Calafiori, it looks as if it's just a little bit settling. He said the other day he's just landed, which I thought was funny because he was in America with him weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. But do you think he's going to come in as a left back or do you think he's going to fight a little bit more with Gabriel and maybe fight him if one of the left backs is out? Like Because I'm not quite sure where we see Calafuri. No, I think he will come in at left back. I think there's a couple of positions he can play. I think it's really interesting to see what happens with him. Uh, it, I, think in the, I think at this moment in time, he's not quite up to pace. No need to rush him in. No need. To, he's learning, like you know, like that back four is is well oiled and well drilled machine, like so. Like get to use it, get to learn it. 
and all that. Like, he'd be a little bit frustrated that he's not getting in. But I also think like where the international break messes us up a little bit, it will help us with the likes of him. We get a couple of games for Italy, get some 90 minutes under his belt without the pressure of what, that we, we've got. And this is the thing with um, players coming in now, Marino, as well. Like, you know, we can't afford to make any mistakes, Dan. Mm. I, know it's, I know it sounds silly. So you can't be sort of saying, oh, we're... we're uh, bed you in and you know yeah, I mean, we've got to just you know like so it may be like you know league cup ties and just trying to get yourself in and, and go from there but I eventually seen him be the main man at, 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 on the left side I was very impressed with his last 20 minutes coming on you know that, that showed you a lot yeah. 20 minutes to go from the end he brought him on and, and um, trusted him to do that at Villa Park so if you can trust him at Villa Park in a big game like yeah, that you can trust him anywhere yeah, certainly. Um, let's move to the left uh, left wing position. Gabriel Martinelli, um, a favourite of your of yours and a favourite of mine, is not at the moment showing the confidence and belief that he's going to be able to stay in this team. With Trossard coming into the mix and delivering, I think it's probably time, particularly against Brighton, a club he knows very well and played for, that he starts. But where are you at with this one? Yeah, listen, I actually, um, I didn't think he was great on Saturday. I watched the game back. Um, and there was there was some good things that he done, you know, um, you know, like a uh, couple of things that he didn't. But there was a couple of uh, times he put the passes in and, and things like that. And football is fine margins, Dan. And I'll mm. tell you why it's fine margin. Trossard could have been a hero, which he was, or he could mm. have been the villain because as soon as he come on, uh, I watched it back. First thing he had to do was defend the corner, and Conza got away from him, and it was only about that much away. Yeah, he, like, he was sleeping. If that goes in, you're one nil down. You look at him and go, wow, well, like you know. So defensively, Martinelli does a good job in there. And then you look on it the other side. Then Trossard just, you know, like fine yeah. margins, uh, was was outstanding after that, and he was mm. for that. 30 minutes he come on like that was as good as 30 minutes mm. that you can ask for like well he, he destroyed their right hand side didn't he let's be real a absolutely he did like you know I mean now you could turn around and say it was a little bit tired because of what Martinelli done I don't know but like from, from my point of view if you come on as a substitute that is the that is what you got to do. You got to make an impact, and he done that, like you know. So I think it's very, very harsh on Martinelli if 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 he was to be left out. If I, I don't think you can leave Trossard out after that. No, I, no. I, I would actually sit here and say, yeah, I'll incredibly give, harsh. Uh, yeah, I, I'll give him Martinelli one more chance. I'm giving him another chance, but I think with that thir thirty minutes of Trossard, I don't know if you can leave somebody out that's played that well. So. Again, it's another dilemma for the manager, a nice one. Uh, but I do see Trossard probably coming in, which is a little bit harsh on Martin because, you know, you, you need a few games to get involved. When you look at it, Declan Rice ain't been at his, uh, at his best. I don't think Havertz was at his best on um, Saturday as well. But even with Martinelli in the side, we, was, we won the game, even though he didn't uh, contribute when we went 1-0. Don't forget, he's run, running people ragged and whatever. But I just think at the end of the day, he's just not done enough to say... Do you know what? If if he'd have played really, really well and then Trossard comes on and puts that performance yeah. in, you could merit it a little bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think he done enough to say, yeah, you can come into the you, you start. For me, Trossard has to start and I would actually stay with Timber at left back. That is the only thing I would do. Everything else would stay the same for me. I think when you look at it, we've got, hello, someone wants to get involved here. We've um, we've got, for me, I think that the rest of the team picks itself. Lastly on Trossard, the movement of Freddie Lundberg and the technical ability of Kleb. What would you say to that? Oh, I'll, I'll have to agree with you on that. <laughs> I'll have to agree. Do you know what? I, 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 um, you don't realise, do you, when you're at the game? And so you watch matches a day or you watch the, 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 the extended highlights or, or the full game. That that goal, the movement of that goal, where he yeah, comes yeah. around, he bends round, and all that. Like a lot of players would have just ball watched and just hung out on that side, but he comes in just at the perfect time. You know, I, I don't know if you can teach that. I think it's probably. A I don't know if you heard the commentary as well from Gary Neville. He said, "Oh, as a right back, I'm wincing here. That is horrendous." He says, "That is not what I want to be seeing as a right back." And it was perfect movement from Leandro Trossard, and that's why I think he deserves 100% uh, to start. Let's quickly talk as before we wrap up on Mikel Moreno because he has been signed by Arsenal. Do you expect him to be on the bench? Do you expect to see him in the squad? Do you think he'll get any minutes, or would he even start him at the weekend? Oh, I expect him to be on the bench. I, I really do. I don't think that he'll start in this game. Again, another one that gets some more minutes when when uh, he goes off to Spain. But yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him. It'd be really interesting to see where he plays, what what 
what position they're going to earmark from you. I think everybody's saying that they're, they're eight row on the left hand side. But then I look at Declan Rice. By the way, I, I thought didn't have one of his better games. No. But after watching that bank in the, la the last 20 minutes, he was sensational. He was. Absolutely sensational. Particularly for the Erdegaard miss where he goes through. I thought Erdegaard would have put that in, but he no. does so well there. It was like the first touch takes him away yeah. from the defender, cuts it back. That is the Declan Rice you want to see. So it's going to be really interesting because I don't, I, I like him in the six, but I do think that there's so much more to Declan Rice's game, you know. Um, and Thomas Party was brilliant. So it'd be really interesting. Again, we ain't got rushing back in, but what I look at it now is if um, if you're going to bring, in, bring him in, you, Safe for Thomas Party. It's not a massive drop off if you're leaving him out for for Declan Nice. We mm. can we can afford to just juggle those three about, which I think is very very important that we do that. But um, I expect to see him, yeah, definitely on the bench. Yeah, I hope he is to be fair, and I hope he comes in because what we might have to consider after this international break is do we throw Marino and Calafiori in against Spurs and Manchester City that's going to be the big question mark for me and very very interesting to see what Mikel Arteta does Lee before we, we wrap up um, let's go for a score prediction I think we're going to win this 2-0 I think we're going to keep another clean sheet I'm going to go for 2-0 to the Arsenal is that what you're yeah, going for? Yeah I'm going for 2-0 <laughs> as well like, yeah. Great minds mate Great minds Great minds so I'd, I'd like to think uh, I think you yeah, know 2-0 I've seen a lot of people say we might concede but I think no, like you know, um, defensively we're up for it, like you know, and uh, yeah, two nil, but a very very tough two nil. I think it'd be one nil uh, for for a while, a little bit like the game here yeah. last season, like you know, and and you know you have to be patient and all that. But I do think that we can't go gun over against these because they have got um, weapons that can hurt us on the break. So uh, where I felt that Wolves had a couple of chances against us, this is a different, and they're a lot better particularly on the break. So we've got to be cautious, but I think, you know, 2-0, I'll take that. and I'll be very, very happy with that. Listen, let's hope we're both right. Guys, do us a favour. Make sure if you're not already, you're subscribed to the channel. We're on the way to 40K, so please make sure that you do that. Hit the like button um, as well, and we'll see you next time.